Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats, and today we are talking with the boys from Return to Dust. How are you guys doing? Yo, we're doing good, man. Good, man. Uh, I'm Maddie. Well, yeah, I'm Graham. Oh, nice yeah. to officially meet you guys. Yeah, yeah, nice of course. You nice to meet you. Yeah, we're missing uh, Seb in London, but uh, so you just got us today. I, I just texted Sebastian, and uh, he he might he might barge his way in here uh like halfway through the interview so you'll you'll get a little taste of sebastian he, cool. he lives right down the street from us actually okay uh, so it's it's kind of funny yeah that's actually a like, funny story how we met is um like we're, graham and i are from texas and uh and we moved to california like we're, we're kind of in the city and then we moved to the outskirts like into the suburbs mm -hmm. and we actually moved uh like 10 houses down from sebastian which is our, our lead guitarist and we he met us we met him on a walk uh he was he was with his, he was on a walk with his mom and they came by and we were like jamming in the garage and his mom like knocked on the garage door and <laughs> uh and was like uh was like plugging him basically was, was okay. like like oh i really like the music uh and like while they're on a walk and his mom was like well let's go say hi so so they walk over and she knocks on the door and we thought it was a noise complaint and we walked out and it was like i was like everything else is history like this guy was, uh, he's, he's a, he was a 16 year old kid and he was like yeah. such a talented creative like guitarist already um and we needed a lead guitarist so that's just funny we just live right next we, we live like 10 houses down from him so i just texted him i'm just like mm -hmm. come over where? yeah anytime we're doing anything we're like hey man like just come over yeah he's just like, pop by <laughs> yeah yeah that's always nice if you can just if you're that close then it's just easy to do things and makes things mm -hmm. that much better i think yeah, well, Graham, yeah. Graham and I lived together. Mm -hmm. uh, one big gay bed. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've had that experience before. So <laughs> living with people and just having to share as much space as possible. Yeah. Zero privacy. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and now but, I have a wife and kids, so I don't have privacy for the next 18 years at least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, you, have, have you ever, um, have you all ever had that talk? Or like, I know that this is a controversial thing in uh, in like marriages, but like having separate beds or having separate rooms or anything. Have you well, ever thought about that? We've, we've kind of looked at that before, but right now she goes to bed before I do. So I don't wake her up. Like she gets into a dead sleep and then I can come to bed. So at least if I snore or something like that, then at least she's still sleeping. Okay. But we don't have space for the double beds or the two beds right now. I've got something that works for you right now. But I feel mm. like I feel like marriage is like realizing that you're eventually going to get to that point where it's like, okay, we do need our space, you know? Well, and right now too, so we have another kid on the way. So we're the space is gonna be non existent, I think, at this point. Oh my god. You give me, me a busy, busy man. On top of doing all this stuff and we start festival season soon. So I'm out covering live festivals myself and yeah, yeah. it's gonna be hectic. Are you going to be at uh, like incarceration or any of the DWP festivals? I might have some of my guys out there, but I'll, I got six or seven booked up here in Canada for myself. Oh, got it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, well, if any of your guys are at any of the DWP festivals, we're playing all the rest of them uh, like the, this, this entire year. Okay. Uh, so if, I'll if, double if, check if, dates and see what, see what we have on, on the books for that. Cause that'd be fun to get out to for sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll, We'd love to talk to anyone. Yeah, it'd be awesome. No matter what. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, it might be worth mentioning. We haven't announced the other ones, so I don't know when this is airing. Uh, that's We've fine. announced incarceration, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's okay. All right. Well, when when are you supposed to be announcing? We can probably push this to a certain time frame if that helps. Uh, I, I, I really don't think it matters. It's okay. If there's like, there's, well, we've already announced our tour dates, which are, yeah, which have the dates of the festivals in them. So it's, all right, that's well, we've, we've got at least a week, I think, right now before this goes out. So we'll be, that's, that's fine. Time. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. Cool. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that would, that would be really cool. Um, we're so freaking excited to play these festivals. Uh, yeah. The, I've seen some of the, the, the lineups for some of them and they look pretty awesome. Yeah. We're actually, I don't know if you know, we're, we're going on tour with Chevelle. Uh, I think and, I was reading up some about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they like last minute took us out as um, as support and we're going to be supporting uh, Tiger Cub and uh, and Chevelle as the headliner on nice. pretty much the whole like East Coast uh, and, and Midwest run. So we're going to be like running all down the U.S. We actually have one date in Canada. Yeah. Uh, I, I forget what's the... I think it's Toronto. Okay. I think it's, are we sure? 
I'm going to check right now. Are you anywhere at, at all close to that? Uh, I'm about four hours away from there, but I do have three or four people actually in Toronto that that would be available probably to do that. It is Toronto. Yeah. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could definitely look at something like that too. That'd be fun to get out. Like I'd love to, to get more insight on you guys. This is a live show and having someone actually out there taking pictures and everything, which would be cool. That would be really cool. Um, yeah. Content guys are super expensive. So we're just like, we need all the, <laughs> all the, all the, <laughs> the photographers that we can't all the help. Well, that's so, how I started as a content guy before interviews. I was out doing the live shows and the festivals and everything. And then COVID and interviews started happening. And now I just do a bit of everything. So, yeah, well, cool. I feel like that's what you got to do is like put on as many hats as you as you possibly can. And mm -hmm. the one of them sticks or maybe all of them kind of stick. And uh, yeah, just just keep doing it. You know that. Like, yeah, that, that was my downfall is that they all started to stick. And, and then there's just too much to do now. Yeah. And then you're like, and now I got freaking two kids and now I'm like, <laughs> yeah. wife and. And I, well, so on top of that, I have about, like my light goes out right now. I have, uh, I think 30 people that work with me under Hidden Beats. Oh, cool. So we cover pretty much all the major markets in Canada. We have 10 or 15 markets in the U.S. covered right now too. And then started the U.K. last year. Cool. Sick. Is that, is that Hidden Beats? Is that like your full-time uh like gig i guess you would say actually i i do have a day job i work with the government to pay the bills so the this is like a, a second job in a sense of spending as soon as i'm done work rolling into doing stuff like this cool dude we definitely know that vibe oh yeah, yeah. i think as, as musicians you, you almost have to do that starting out until you you make oh, it big, really it's like entertainment period Any, yeah yeah. Anything, yeah i mean thankfully we're in a position now where we're not even making money off of our music yet we just have uh like we just got signed so we have like a good um like uh i guess fall back um you're, like, you're building your foundation up more at this point probably yeah so now we can so we just recently quit our jobs actually uh our day jobs and we can kind of focus on music more and obviously you can't work your day job while you're on tour so that wasn't going to happen anyways that's not public I, I know yeah, yeah. It's i'm just saying i'm just saying all right, all right. Yeah, I know. whatever yeah, well, like i said we, we got a week at least before this goes out so if, if we need to push it you guys can always let me know yeah yeah for sure well uh, one of the main things we're here to talk about is you guys music and everything and um i'm curious how you guys started out early like what got you into music going going into this now um graham and i grew up together we went to we went to middle school together and uh also our, our friend ryan who lives here he's not in the band but he, he basically is he helps out so much uh ryan uh, was a big catalyst yeah ryan ryan basically helped us get into music he was like the one who was like so bold like bringing guitars to school and stuff and being like you know like who was that guy he was that yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, I think there's always one of them around somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and we were friends with him, and I just I respected it so much. I was like, well, now I want a guitar, and now I want to start singing. So we he's did. Like, he's like as close to a, a bard in real life. He's he's a bard okay. class, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Hey, it's cool. always cool seeing those guys hanging around. Yeah, yeah, um, and like it, it's funny because the, the, those kind of people get made fun of so much, like in school, but really, like they are the ones that are the most like themselves and like the most like just like, interesting those, like interesting and, yeah, and, and different like things and and like real people you know yeah uh, not people who are just trying to like fit in which you know we we did to an extent we were just like oh i see that i see what you're doing you're just being yourself and that's cool mm -hmm. and we're also gonna we're also gonna do that so we started playing music um i think i started playing guitar when i was 16 uh but started like kind of slowly getting into music um before then with like piano and stuff and you were always in choir so you you'd always been singing but um you yeah. started playing guitar and we started doing like covers like folk songs like Fleetwood Mac or like alternative songs like Panic of the Disco, Hozier, uh stuff like that. Not rock at all, although we were we were both kind of fans of rock, but we didn't really like listen that that heavily to it uh, we were never in a band or anything we were always just like acoustic guitars harmonies stuff like that yeah it was like very very like folk folky or just like um kind of more like alternative stuff that we would play a lot and you know we'd sing with each other and like our friend ryan and like we'd do these open mics uh at this coffee shop i don't, I don't know if you already said that but no uh 
yeah, we do these open mics that are, uh, it's like the only musical venue. It's like, wasn't even a really a venue, but um, yeah, it was just like a coffee shop that had open mics every Thursday night. And we'd like go there with our friends and, you know, we'd always have like songs that we would have at the ready and we'd either perform mm -hmm. together or individually. And that was kind of like our, you know, tiny little scene that we had. If uh, anything, it helped us get our sea legs for performing in front of people. I definitely yeah. felt that. Yeah. Like I was always so nervous going up, even in front of your friends, like, you know, 10, oh, yeah. 15 people. But dude, it, be yeah. it became a lot easier. And I think that that kind of spills over into music now, which is like, I'm, I'm okay being in front of people. I'm, totally. I'll just freeze up. Totally. Uh, but so that's kind of how we got our start. And then we went our, Graham and I went our separate ways for college. Ryan also went his separate way and he moved to California and, uh, and he started, he, he wanted to do music. Uh, he was, he'd already, he'd already convinced of that, convinced mm -hmm. himself of that. So he was, he moved here to do music. We went our separate ways and we started pursuing like STEM degrees in like different, different cities, different States. And, uh, and Ryan basically, uh, he's, he's just always our friend. We just like went to go visit him on a, on a spring break trip. Uh, and so I like picked up Graham from Colorado and I was in Texas and we met in California and uh, we met our producer, which is who Ryan worked under uh, in L.A. And um, our, uh, Jim, which is his name, our producer, he was just like instantly a fan of like us and our music. And he like saw something in it. And he's like, even though you guys like aren't playing any like original songs or anything, he's like, we just played him a cover. He was like, I can tell that like it's there. There's like something there. Mm -hmm. So he told us, he was like, you should drop out of college and move to LA and I'll make you a record. And like, we we're like total fools for believing that, you know, <laughs> I feel like it, was, it actually ended up being true. He did, but um, yeah, we were, we were foolish, like blind ignorance to, to believe that at the time, but we did, we like packed up all of our stuff and we moved um, across the country to LA with like a thousand dollars in our bank account. And we're just like, that was right before COVID. So we were just like scraping by, like working day jobs, like, trying to you know just like barely paying our bills and like um uh and just like writing songs um and sending them to jim and he'd be like this one's good this one's not good this one's good this one's not good and uh and then eventually we like built up a body of work to where he was like okay like we have a solid foundation you guys have like really grown a lot as writers and um you know the songs are about like your lives and it's very real and uh we shot some music videos and we just kind of been building it up ever since. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of it. Yeah. We met Sebastian along the way, like three years ago, whenever he came up and knocked on our garage and uh, London is, uh, he's pretty new to our band. Like he's been in for like six months. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I don't know if that was information overload, but that's the gist. Oh no, that's great. It's learning more about like what makes you guys tick really. That's always the fun part about having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things I read is that you guys have a your one of your inspirations is Alice in Chains and you're trying to bring back, you know, some of that feeling of everything. What specifically was it that that was the inspiring point and in something like that? I think it was a couple things. Um I think we knew that we both wanted to sing. Um that is definitely one of the bands that did the whole duo frontman really well. I mean, I think Lane's kind of obviously the frontman, but um, but still, it was like Lane and Jerry, like that was always the thing. And there's several bands that have that. I mean, like System of a Down, you know, uh, with with Darren's vocals and um, uh, God, I, I'm spacing. There's there's so many others from the '90s that do like the whole duo vocal thing but that was definitely one of them and and i think we also just kind of appreciated the the like darkness that allison chains had uh because you know like nirvana definitely had a darkness but it was i guess like more in the on the like kind of alternative punky side well, yeah it was and, way more punky i think that we really yeah. i think that we really found like uh, solace and inspiration in Alice in Chains because they did like the blend of like acoustic and electric thing. Yeah. And it was like, it's cool. They had their down songs and then they had their like super heavy, like rocking tunes. And it was like, 
that is awesome. Like, I love the fact that they can just like rock a stage all standing up with electric guitars and like sit down with acoustic and rock just as hard, but like in a yeah. different way. You're crying at the end as opposed to headbanging. And I think that we just like really resonated with that um, like dynamicism of musicality from 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 Alice in Chains. And uh, I mean, listen to them like fucking crazy all throughout COVID and just like tried to absorb as much as we can. Them among many others, like Stone Temple Pilots, Soundgarden, Death yeah. Tone, and a bunch of other like broad musical influences that we have that are rock and non-rock. Yeah, I don't think you can really like I'm not a musician by any sense, but I don't think you can call yourself a true musician if you're not listening to different things and, and trying to take, you know, there's hearing those different pieces and oh, he did this this way and he did this this way, stuff like that. And like I think that helps you develop more. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I I also I don't want to like say that we're like bringing the sound back because I feel like we're like we're not trying to revive something that's dead i just want to like um i guess create something new that's inspired by the inspired by the past i mean like anything is you know mm -hmm. Any, anyone pulls inspirations like you're saying like from different things from the past and uh he did something this way he did something this way but i want to i want to like try and birth something new that's not just like you know they did this back then and it was cool let's make it here again uh let's do like something like fresh and uh, a new like take on rock music that I feel like we haven't had in decades. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pay, pay homage to it, but then still have your own, your own swing really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah. No, I think it sounds good to me. Like I was listening to some of the stuff before the interview and, and I'm liking the way it feels and you can, I think you can feel some of the inspirations in there with what For you sure. guys are listening to, but I, I do sense your music out of it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't remind me specifically of one thing like you're mimicking anything really yeah yeah and the, so you had your a recent album release too the self-titled return to dust mm -hmm. what was the the thought behind putting that one together um that was a lot of songs we wrote like during covid like three or four years ago and uh and of course we were listening to a lot of the 90s the 90s brunch stuff during that time mm -hmm. and uh it kind of just it came from a whole bunch of different places and i think it like really like marks the beginning of our journey and the kind of sound as how it took shape uh with like all these different influences and and like feelings that we had like moving moving out and being in this like unfamiliar place and then like losing like moving away from all of our friends and and family and uh and then just trying to like make something happen that we don't know is actually going to happen, which is music. Uh, and it's like so unsure and there's so much like doubt and, um, you know, feelings that we're doing things wrong. Um, but then there's also like companionship. Like when, like I moved out here with Graham and like he's always someone that like I can look to and be like, I'm not doing the wrong thing because he believes that I'm not doing the wrong thing. And he can believe that that. He's not doing the wrong thing, vice versa, yeah. you know, because we trust each other that like we will get through it together no matter what. So there's like, you know, all these low points in the album and all these high points in the album that kind of just like highlight those two things. Is that is that good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I think, you know, sometimes bands don't, uh, you know, do like the whole self-titled on on the first record, but it it um just felt like it was right for this one. Like it felt like the these are the songs that kind of foundationalize the uh the sonic profile of the band and and kind of what we are and who we are and uh what we write about and like what we think and what mm -hmm. we've experienced. And I think that all of those experiences in the songs really do lay the foundation for, you know, for what we uh for what we're about and and what's to come too is like yeah, uh, yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if you heard like face down but i feel like that's the most like um newer sounding song like anyone can listen to that song and uh it's like obviously it fits into the body of work but i think that's the one that like hints the most towards the direction that the sound is going to go on later albums which yeah have a lot of recorded music we we go crazy in the studio like basically we're best friends with our producer and he's the, like the biggest um like component in this band so we're yeah. we're recording like literally all the time yeah he's like the invisible uh 
like fifth member. Yeah, we have, we have uh, several invisible fifth. He's members. the god like, hand above us, dude. Just yeah. Like directing, yeah, directing yeah. us. Yeah, that was actually another question I had further down the list is if you had to introduce like someone brand new to your music, the first song they listen to. So it sounds like like Face Down is the one that you probably aim for. I yeah, I I just love that song. I think it's got such a cool vibe. Uh, I may, maybe it's not everyone's favorite right now, but I think it will become everyone's favorite at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, everyone loves Belly Up. So statistically, yeah. I'd probably be like, here's Belly Up if you <laughs> want to like our band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how yeah. do you think your music then has evolved from from this release going back to the the Black Black Road in 2023? Like what? How's your music changed from that release? Um, see, I don't think it's really changed because we had all those songs written. We were just kind of choosing which songs are going to be the, the, um, which, which, you know, how are we going to like give you a breadcrumb, give our listeners a breadcrumb okay. trail to get to where, um, we can show you like what we've really been working on, you know? Okay. Uh, I, I think we had all those songs recorded, all, all the LP and everything recorded by the time we released the EP. Uh, so you're asking how have the songs how 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 did the songs change on the full length record from the EP? Is that what the question was? Or yeah, basically, like I always like to to have have guys think about the the evolution of the music. So if you're releasing you know an album then another one, typically there's something in the middle that might have changed your thought process on why why you might put it together this way or why I... songs fit better in certain places, things like that. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying is like we had everything recorded at once. So it's not like mm -hmm. writing the EP made us write the LP. It was like we had everything and we're kind of just like, here, let me just trickle these out. And yeah. Let you, let, let you see what the whole big picture is. We're giving you like a small little, a little, a little nugget. Mm -hmm. and then, which was the EP. Which was the EP. Yeah. And then here's a little bit more, which is the LP. And then we've got even more than that, <laughs> like afterwards. So yeah, really kind of fun is like devising a strategy as to how to release all those because we don't have to worry about um, writing. I mean, Graham and I literally write like almost every single day. Like we have yeah, voice the, memos galore. So the, yeah. the process is very much like, like uh like batching and then once you have a substantial batch or once we have a substantial batch then we start to look at a body of work and like what that would look like within okay. the batch and really like kind of piece it together so um and that's so, the fun part. So, so if you have like let's say we just we recorded uh you know a bunch of like kind of more down songs you know mm -hmm. uh, like ballads or what have you then you can kind of write into the hole and the hole being that you have too many down songs and you should probably make some, uh, you know, r write something that's uh, fast paced. That, like, yeah. That kind of like counterbalances it on the record. Cause I don't know for us, like, you know, I don't want to just make a whole record of ballads or like, I don't want to make a whole record of, uh, you know, like, sludgy rock tune like i want like a full you know journey peaks and valleys yeah you know? yeah i think that's what so. like all alice and jane's records do so well and yeah that's, or just really our i guess your favorite records you know all yeah just a that. good record a good yeah, record I does think, that yeah mm -hmm. uh, is, is there one record that changed your guys lives like i think everyone typically when they're listening to music has that one record or even just one song that that was like mind blowing, like, holy crap, this one spoke to me in so many different ways. I go and like, I'm so temperamental with my records. Like I'll be crazy obsessed with like a record for like a month and then, it'll, and then I'll move on. So mm. it'll change my life for like a month, you know? <laughs> yeah. and then the I'm the same way, to be honest. I, I, yeah. I'll listen to something like religiously and then wonder how the hell I listened to that for so long. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we got to give it to Hozier. That that's what oh dude for sure that that's his like, first his self titled record his first record we got to give it to him for our beginnings yeah. and then like you got to shout out nothing but these and captions in the bottom and for getting us like rock so, like, <laughs> we were we were so obsessed with that whenever we were younger like so yeah. crazy it's, it's embarrassing to say now that's but, a big part of high school uh, for sure but those, uh, those those songs like yeah nothing but these is first record and also broken machine was really really cool um do you have you listened to those guys i've listened to some i did not not a regular on my my rotation but i've definitely had had some cross my list before 
it's really interesting because right now they're like really dancey they're like really leading into uh leaning into kind of like this like mj feel and it's like super dancey and like very like 80s but it's not at all what they used to yeah, be, used to be like very be, yeah like dark alternative like very uh yeah just uh, just yeah just dark alternative like rock like yeah. very yeah um, fucked with it though. yeah it's really really cool um i think so, it's yeah. interesting when a when a band can do that though they can they can really yeah. jump from from one thing to another and still sound really good and like if yeah. you look at like lincoln park they were they used to change up some of the feels of their albums every time and they they'd have haters but then every album did well for what it was and had fun with what it was dude hybrid theory and meteora are like the best lincoln park records everything oh, yeah. after them is like inside to me but, yeah, yeah. There's definitely to me. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't vibing with some of them later on down the line. But like, there's definitely some some good songs in some of those. Like one of my top three is uh, "Leave Out All the Rest." Like the song from that one. I yeah. can't remember the album right now for. But like, that's always on the top three of my favorite songs for sure. Totally. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, what's there the yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got, we, you got, we got play, play, player three. Yeah, plus Stop one. So late. No, so, you're not late at so all. Join late. the party. Okay. Good. All freaking good. There we go. Plus one player. This is Sebastian. Yeah. Hello. How's it going, man? Good and you. I'm good. Pretty good. Nope. We're just talking about records that changed your life. Do you have any records that have changed your life? Oh, I got any, plenty. Any like one record? Oh, yeah. If yeah. you had to pick the the one that was that was the pinnacle to to music for you. Oh yeah, and Justice for All from Metallica. With okay. That, that checks out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wearing uh, the shirt right now. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I mean, that's a great that's a great album sure yeah that's this, this guy is like the biggest metallica fan like oh yeah one of my first concerts i ever went to was a metallica concert actually cool. really Sick. that's dope yeah it, it was such a random thing too like i didn't even know they were playing and some guys like oh wait i have an extra ticket for 20 bucks do you want to go and i said oh, my uh, go and when yeah. what 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 year oh this would have been 10 15 years ago at this point now like it was wow. it was a while back and it was my first introduction to metallica and i went holy shit like like damn that that worked out really well for me yeah yeah i think godsmack was op opening for them too and just their general presence and they did their drum duel and everything and i went oh perfect perfect set of music for me nice yeah mm -hmm. yeah everyone <laughs> So I do, I do like to ask a couple fun questions on the back half of the interview, just to you know make you guys think a little bit more. My favorite one that I ask every first time interview is, "What's one thing you think should be asked more in an interview that's not asked enough?" <laughs> oh man, that's a good question. That is a really good uh, question. Um, we got a, we got a, a really good. I feel like we got a couple really good questions whenever we were at the the Rockville Festival. Oh, yeah, I like those. Yeah. I'm trying to think of. Uh, of some good questions that were asked there um uh me too what's your favorite color i'm just kidding <laughs> the fun uh, questions are, are they they can set you back sometimes and make you think like that yeah that's true. yeah something yeah. like the off the cuff stuff mm -hmm. um oh man I, I think we we just got asked like um so some questions that i really like are just uh like um Oh God, what was it? It was like, how do you, um, like, like, what mindset or something are you in whenever you're you're writing music or something like that? Everyone loves to talk about obviously themselves, you know? So I think just asking like, you know, what you were going through at the time, like what, how, how you created this thing, like, well, like what were your, you know, I, I just think those obviously you, you probably already hit those, but uh, well, we we've talked a little bit about some of those. But quite honestly, when you're having a good time with with an interview like this, it usually leads into a second round because we only budget so much time for the first one, and then we there's so many more things to talk about. So like yeah. we're probably going to have to have another one of these at some point. Absolutely, man. Let's yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's a, here's a good fun question for you then to throw you off. What's the most underrated salad dressing out there? Oh, God. dang salad dressing raspberry vinaigrette really what like i i can't stand raspberry on a salad oh, well fuck you then <laughs> no but i do like like a balsamic vinaigrette things like that like the, the raspberry sweetness and 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 tartness i don't know to me it doesn't fit 
I like like a like a toasted sesame dressing. That's always yeah. really mm, yeah, like a soy sauce sesame kind of dressing on like an Asian salad with like some yeah. like the onions and it's uh, actually one of my wife's she we have like a bottle of, of like Asian sesame dressing for salads yeah. for one of her favorites. So fucking good. That's hella underrated. I was actually kinda off kinda off topic, but on topic. I was talk I was thinking the other day that Mediterranean food's always so underrated. Like whenever you're in a group of people and you're always like yo, let's get like pizza or let's get Mexican food or something like that or Chinese. Everyone's like, wow. And then the first time anyone says Mediterranean, it's just like, no, nah, like cricket. But yeah. It's like, why is that get hit so much hate? Like, it really is so, so fucking oh, good. Oh, I, I love ordering like a Greek family meal that we can just sit and pick at and have fun with. That's always yeah. amazing. Like a, a Euro's got to be one of my top five favorite meals. Yeah, wow. that's yeah. One, definitely one of mine for sure. That and chicken wings I could eat every day if I if I wanted to. <laughs> Things oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you guys... Well, actually, here's another fun one. So we'll pick this one off the list. Is What's something on your go-to playlist that people wouldn't expect you're listening to? Hmm. Like uh, Guilty uh, Pleasure songs. Sabrina so, Carpenter. <laughs> I'm actually going to be... Uh, I'm going to one of the festivals up here where she's playing. It'll be my first time actually even listening to her music. Dude, to my surprise, she's got like 80 million monthly mm -hmm. listeners, yeah, she's, which is she's crazy kind of it right now. for me. I she's know been I'm killing it, I know. I looked her up and I went, holy shit, like, who is this? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I hear her song everywhere. I'm like, yeah, she's probably got a, you know, couple, a couple listens, you know? Mm. Yeah, there's <laughs> a few coming up in some of the spots that I'm going to be checking out. I had no idea who they were, but then you look at them and like, oh, everybody else knows who they are except for me. Yeah, it's because we're just rockheads, man. It's true. Yeah. What's this on your playlist? Well, then? yeah, I mean, I got a lot of like rap music right now, a lot of Kendrick and and I've been Michael Jackson constantly. Oh, I gotta love Michael Jackson though. I love yeah. Michael Jackson. I'm actually going out to to Lloyd Banks tonight. He's here in town. Wow. Yeah, so we're gonna get to hang out with him and have some fun. It is Lloyd Banks. I'm, I'm, yeah. Sure. Well, Fifty Cent's running running mate there. He always did shows with them. Sick. Cool. Yeah, so we're we actually got him booked in town, so I get to go hang outside stage and see see just what he does. Cool. Oh, yeah. Um, that's that's what my you... little wrench. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and this is kind of a rock band, so it's not like super crazy, but Fontaine's is dropping some new stuff that's really cool. It's a an interesting direction for them. They're going like they're leaning like super hard into this like uh i don't know it's just like the dude's got like spiky hair and he's like carrying a buster sword everywhere the uh, uh yeah brian post-punk yeah it's like i mean they're already hyper -punk. modern post-punk like it, it's yeah. crazy but um uh, yeah really cool yeah i actually had an email about a release that they were doing so I was, they came across my desk recently so it was interesting to see that cool yeah yeah what about you, Matthew? Um, I got mad video game soundtrack <laughs> my playlist. Yeah, those are fun. And you get the the groups like Dragon Force and stuff like that who have that video game sound to everything they do. It's kind of yeah. a mm -hmm. nice fun play with that. Yeah, I like I like some medieval music. So like all like the Bethesda games, like I got their I got their soundtracks like on lock always. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. All right, important question. What do you hope people take away from your music? Oh, uh, I hope they feel a little bit more, uh, understood. Mm -hmm. I think we, uh, we try and write in a way that, um, makes people feel, uh, like they can take, a, like they can take away something from it, you know, that they mm -hmm. can, um, feel a little bit less alone or like we can, uh, we can put into words what they can't and, uh, and put music behind it and really cool, dark visuals and, you know, make people feel, feel that, you know? Yeah, your heart, like you really listen to a good song. I think it's our our job or, or just artists' jobs to kind of shed light on, you know, some things that aren't really talked about or like don't uh yeah, so that people don't hear on a daily basis, um, that they should, you know, probably hear. It's you know, it's good to see that, you know, if you have like if you're going through something that you know, someone else has gone through something very similar. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really a part of like the human connection is like, um, you know, realizing that um, 
that you're not alone and there's you know plenty of people that uh can be by your side during like those times where you feel like the most in the dark and stuff like that yeah uh, which is a really intense way to put that but no no uh, but that's honestly that's the i think that's what music really does a lot is it's a individual feeling but it's in a group setting so you may think you're alone but you look to your left and right and you got people that are in that same that same moment feeling something too and you're all connected in that way yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. and i guess last but not least before zoom kicks us off here probably the best question to end off is are you happy oh for sure yeah i mean i, I think there's many other life paths that we all could have chosen and we decided this one and they all led us to where we are now and uh, I, I I couldn't imagine myself being any better off um, doing what I love and, you know, not being stuck behind a desk or not being like, you know, doing something that I hate just in general uh, or in a position that I hate. And I, uh, I don't live my life with like any regret or anything of the opportunities that I didn't take. Um, I pretty much took them all and that makes me pretty happy. Yeah. yeah. Speak you asked us earlier what are uh what are some good questions to ask that's a really good question that is a really, a good, really question. good question so yeah. i like that a lot but uh, yeah i always try to keep that one to the end because it's that feel good moment almost and it makes you kind of go oh wait am i yeah <laughs> yeah 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 that's true um are you happy yeah are you I'd, happy? I'd like to think so i'm i mean everything's kind of going in the right direction for me it definitely could be worse yeah could be worse sure. that, that's a good that's a good place to start with that question. That's something to always remember. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think about what I have and, and it's, I've worked really hard to get where I am for things and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And, you know, I get to have fun conversations like this with you guys. I would have never got to like meet you guys beforehand if I didn't go down the road I am right now. It's totally. true. Yeah. That's yeah, true. man. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. For on the road that you did so we could, we could meet you. Yeah. It's fun times for sure. Well, Zoom's about to kick us off, so we're going to make sure we link everything in socials and everything, and we're going to have to have another one of these for sure because there's lots of topics we can talk about. Absolutely. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're on tour on the East Coast uh, in the Midwest this whole, like, next couple, three or four months. So, awesome. uh, you know, if, if you know anyone that wants to go to the shows or anything like that, just reach out to Edder and, and tell her to reach out to us. And, uh, and yeah, 